Hi, welcome to another video. So, DeepSeek V3 has been making a lot of hype these days, and I really like it because it truly deserves it, and it's just a very good model. I mean, the API is super cheap. So, as with hype, some tools to use it in different ways have also started to pop up. And today, I have one such tool, and it's called DeepSeek Engineer. It's an AI agent that's majorly focused on being a coder, similar to Claude Engineer, which is also developed by the same developer as Claude Engineer, but it's not an instance of that. It's like the Claude Engineer V2 instead of the latest V3 1, because it cannot make its own tools like V3. It's only stuck with the tools that are already added to it. So, let me just tell you everything about it and how it all works. But, before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Photogenius AI. Photogenius AI is an all-in-one AI-powered art generator that allows you to type anything and get stunning visuals instantly. Photogenius AI gives you all kinds of image generation models in one place, whether it be Flux, Stable Diffusion, Kardinsky, or any image generator model that you can think of. Not just that, it also gives you the option to do advanced AI image editing as well with their cool AI tools like an AI avatar generator, background removal, logo generator, emoji generator, or even add an app icon generator. And the best part is that it starts at only $10 and you can get an additional 25% off these already great deals by using my coupon code KING25. So, make sure that you check out photogenius.ai through the link in the description and generate some cool stuff with it. So, DeepSeek Engineer is a coding assistant that is made to be used with the new DeepSeek V3 model. It's an intuitive command line interface, similar to Ader, that allows you to give it a task, and it can read local file contents, create new files, and apply diff edits to existing files in real time. It uses helper functions or tools to achieve most of the tasks, and there aren't many of them, but the basic ones, which is what is needed generally. It also takes all replies from the models in JSON format and makes sure that it adheres to JSON output with optional file creations or edits, which is also good. And you can also edit system prompts and everything like that. It also maintains conversation history, which is also good to see. It's very similar to Ader for most of the tasks, although one thing that makes it super cool to use is the fact that it's all put in one file. So, all you need is this one file, and it's super portable, and you can use it, and you can even customize it to your liking, because the code is also easy to navigate through, and you can even ask it to build itself, because the code base isn't that large, which is kind of cool. Now let me tell you how you can get it installed, and how it all works. To install it, you can just get it cloned. Once you have done that, you can just get in the folder, and then you can just install it with the pip install command like this, and it will get all the stuff installed for you. Once it has been installed, you can just start it by running the main Python file. But, before you run it, you'll need to export the DeepSeq API key like this. If you are using DeepSeq via OpenRouter or some other place, then you can just go into the main Python file and change the base URL here. You can also use it with Hyperbolic's free credits as well. Some people were saying in yesterday's video that they cannot see the DeepSeq V3 model on Hyperbolic. Well, that's true because it seems that they have removed its listing from their site due to slow performance, and they are working on bringing it back there. But in the meantime, you can still use the DeepSeq V3 model through their API although it will be a little slow, and it may go down sometimes because they are working on it as well. So, 
you can just enter the hyperbolic base URL here, and then in this line, change the model name to DeepSeq V3. Once you have done that, just export the hyperbolic API key in the DeepSeq API key variable. Anyway, once that's figured out, just get it started, and this is what it looks like. You can see that here, we can just ask it to do something, or we can also manually add files to it by using the slash add operator. And along with that, you can add the file here, and it will be in its context. But you can also ask it to do something, and it can figure out what to add to the context itself as well. So let's try to do something as well. So this is a basic app. Let's ask it to make me a playable synth keyboard because it's a much more challenging thing to do, and I like building it. Let's send it and see. Okay, so you can see that it starts streaming the response from it here. The responses are in JSON because it takes the output from the model in that format because it's basically like tool calling, similar to how Klein or Ader does it. Okay, it seems that it's now done. And if we look at the directory, then we have the stuff we needed here, which is great. Let's try to open it, and let's try to use it. Okay, so, this is what it looks like. Although the black keys are not correctly aligned, which is not so good. But anyway, we have the stuff here, and it also works well, which is also great to see. We can also make it change stuff in it as well. So, let's ask it to add a simple heading to it, saying King. Once we send it, then you can see that it does that, which is also great. And you can also see the assistant's reply here as well, which is also good to see. If we preview it, then you can see that we have the heading as well, which is what we wanted. So that's great. Another thing that we can do is add files to it manually as well. So I have a basic string reverse tool that I want to add here. So, let's just write slash add along with the file name here. Once we do that, you can see that it gets added to the context now, which is great. Now, let's ask it to make some changes to it. I want it to randomize the character arrangement after the reverse as well. So, let's send it. Now, you can see that it again starts doing that as well. Let's wait a bit for it to finish and it's now done. So, if we try to run it, then you can see that it starts and works well, which is what we wanted. So, that's basically how it works. The best part is that it's all just one file, and you can customize it however you want, which is really great, to say the least, because it will allow you to use it to customize it in any way. Like you can add in your own tools, or even ask DeepSeek to improve on itself, which is pretty amazing as well. One thing that I also liked is that you can easily port it to any folder, use it there, and just remove it without going through the hassle of installing something like Ader. One more thing is that it's not just limited to coding. So, if you just want DeepSeek to read some files, or write some files or edit them, then it can do that as well, because it's not solely focused on just coding, like what Ader and Klein are focused on, which is also great to see. So, this is a good option, if you want to have something simple without a bunch of unnecessary things. It's super portable and customizable. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.